Are we ready? That was still kind of pathetic. Come on, people. Are we ready? Yes! Come on, you're supposed to be excited about learning about Google Certified Teacher. Okay, so we're going to introduce ourselves first. I'm Mary Martin, also known as Mary, Ms. Martin, Ms. Martian, depending on what grade level I'm in. They tend to mess up my name. Um, I teach K-6 computers, technology integration, do tech support. And I was Google Certified Teacher class of 2007. My name is Alan Martin, and I am the uh, District Technology Resource Teacher for Bowling Green City Schools in Kentucky. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's great to be here. I think I was 09 was my year, and uh, I got my Google Certified Teacher uh, status uh, at uh, Washington D.C., which was kind of interesting. And uh, my job as district technology resource teachers, I get to go to teach teachers how to use different pieces of technology. I get to work with them. I get to coach them. I get to uh, try to figure out how we can best get uh, the use of technology in the classroom for our students. And one of the things that's been working really, really nice uh, has been some of our Google tools. So, and I don't think we're related. Um, but I am Alan Martin as well. I know that's interesting. If we were in Kentucky, there'd be a good chance we were related. <laughs> okay. Um, on the slide right now is a link to our presentation slides. So if you want to go back afterwards, look through any of the resources, they'll all be there. I will come back to this slide at the very end. So if you don't have a chance to write it down right now, We'll give you that option in a little bit. So, first thing we want to talk about a little bit is the difference between Google Certified Teacher and Google Ads Certified Trainer. Um, lately, I've been getting a lot of people coming up to me asking questions about the two and not sure what the difference is between them. Um, if you're talking about a Google Certified Teacher, the GCT, that is teacher-based, and I think that's what most of you are here to learn about, right? Yeah. Okay. And what that is, you learn to use the different Google tools in education, and you also are you know, strongly recommended that you share what you've learned with other teachers and spread the knowledge. So when you go to the Google Teacher Academy, there's an application process when you're accepted, you get to visit Google HQ in whatever city you apply for. You'll meet with a cohort of other teachers. You'll spend the day learning about the Google tools, sharing ideas back and forth, collaborating, creating lessons and ideas, and it's very much teacher and education based. The Google App Certified Trainer is more the technical edge of Google. The Certified Trainer is learning how to install, implement, and use Google Apps within a school district or a business. So it's very much focused on just the Google Apps, and it's more the technical end of it. How do I do blah? How do I set up Google Apps for my school? How do I create accounts for all of my teachers or my students? So that's the difference between the two of them, and the one we're talking about today is the Google Certified Teacher, the teacher and education-oriented Google training. I would just reiterate on the, the Google Certified Teacher, if you're looking to do that, they're wanting to know how many other teachers and how many other people that you can impact. For me, in my position, I think it helps me because my job is to do professional development uh, all year long. Now, now, in my school district, sure, I do some in the beginning, but then I also set up, you know, Google trainings and so forth throughout the year. Uh, I, I go to just like if it's a middle school where they have teaming, I'll go during their planning and I'll do training during that particular time. I was involved, uh, and, and I still am involved, with our regional technology resource teachers, in which you know I could go to that event. Uh, we, we meet once uh, once a month, and so I put on there that I would do trainings for that particular group. Uh, now that, actually before the teach meets came up, uh, that's why I, I, I started on before the teach meets, but something like a teach meet, you know, you could put on there, hey, I want to attend some teach meets, and I want to present, or I already have attended teach meets, and I want to present. 
So uh, I think what they're really, really wanting to see is how much you can impact other people. Uh, you can make up things like, uh, hey, you want to teach Google uh, to the parents so that when the students and the teachers are using it in the classroom, parents will have an idea of you know how to share folders and how to work with some of those things. So I, I think, uh, and Meredith probably, I hope would agree that you know they're looking for some creative ways where you can get people in there. Now with Google Hangouts coming out, you know there's opportunities for you to reach out even outside of your little classroom. So if you're a classroom teacher and you're wanting to be a Google certified teacher, you got to think outside of your classroom. And as a note. Teachers, <laughs> we got to be thinking outside of our classroom anyway, uh, because there's a whole big world. And uh, the Google App Certified Trainer, I'm not as familiar with. I will say, uh, out we are now a Google Apps for Education. Did I say that right? Yeah, Google Apps for Education district. Uh, and I, one of our technicians, he he went through some training, and he already set up uh, our whole district. So now he manages all of our student and teacher Google accounts. We rolled that out this year, and it's been just a really, really nice process. Very few problems. Uh, I went into our high school, which uh, I think our high school principal may be watching. Our high school teachers are absolutely fantastic, but as I said in my last presentation, you only get this much window to, to convince those guys, and I think at our school, we had enough window, and we, we've convinced them, and they're really using it because it's, uh, it's saving paper and it's doing a lot of uh, wonderful things like that. And I'll turn it back to Meredith. <laughs> and I want to say, uh, <laughs> Meredith started this whole presentation and she did most all of it, but we shared this presentation just this morning through Google Docs, and so now all of a sudden this presentation has happened. Again, she did most of the work, but I did add some things and add some slides. So this is the power of what Google can do, and because we were fortunate enough to have this this uh, opportunity, it's really helped us. I met him this morning, first time, yeah. and we were Don't able we to collaborate. We had the same shirt. <laughs> yeah, there you go, we're, we match. Um, the most important part of the Google Teacher Academy, other than the academy itself, is of course getting accepted to the Google Academy. And over the years, it's gotten a lot harder to get in because more and more educators are learning about this and hearing from people who have been through the, the Academy. And so now there are tons more people applying. Um, it is not uncommon for there to be 400 or more people applying for a spot at a single academy, and the academies are generally limited to 50 spots. So, in order to get your application chosen, you really need to work on making it stand out. Now, there are two parts to the application, and the first one is the written application, and they will have a form, a Google form online, that you will go in and fill out with all the information required. They'll ask you about your experiences, they'll ask you about your goals, your future plans, how you plan to share what you learn, and <coughs> in that, you get a chance to really shine through with your writing skills and include everything that you can think of. Right? What they're looking for from what we can gather Number one, your experiences and innovations. What have you done so far? Okay. What makes you a standout educator? How have you changed the way you teach in your classroom? And then the second part of that is the influence with other teachers, schools, and the education community at large. You don't have to be a Google Apps district to apply or be accepted. When I went for my training, we did not have Google Apps in our district. But as a result of me going through the training and then coming back and sharing all of this information with our administration, a couple years later, we moved to Google Apps and are now a Google Apps district. So you want to look forward as well. I would like to do this. I would like to do that. I have plans for this. So that you're not just focused on what you're doing right now, but where you want to go from here. The second part 
which I think scares a lot of people, is the video. Right? You are required to create a video as part of your application. I believe it's a one minute long video. Yeah, it's, it's generally about one minute long. That's not a lot of time to sell yourself in. And a lot of people just kind of freeze up and panic, like, oh my god, I, I don't know how to make a video, I'm gonna panic. It's not as scary as it sounds. It does not have to be a live video. You don't have to take a video of yourself. I did not have access to video cameras when I created my video. So instead, I took pictures of some of the different activities I was doing with my students and then put those into something like Movie Maker or Animoto and just added a little voice track over it explaining or a little, you know, some written text on the videos. So don't worry about not having, oh my god, super video skills. They're not looking at your technical skills. They're looking at the content. And each academy has different themes that they want you to base your video on. So it's very important before you even begin thinking about what you're doing for your video, look at the themes that they are requesting for that academy. It could be something like innovation, or motivation, or collaboration. So you want to make sure that your video is on topic for what they're looking for. Okay. Again, be as creative as you can. Include the things that you're doing now. Talk about what you would like to do. Sell yourself. Okay. This is your time to just really jump out there and show them some of the amazing stuff you do. Uh, I, and I uh, mentioned it earlier, but you know, empower other people. You got to think about how I want to make other people better. So it's not just about only me and what I'm, you know, about my process. It's how can I make the rest of the group better? And and we were not a Google Apps for Education district either. Uh, so I was able to say, hey, we're wanting to move this direction. I wanted to try to get our district in now, and now we in fact are. You know, I went back and sold with my boss. He got involved in it. Um, the uh, the video portion of it, uh, I told you I was from Kentucky, and uh, I I use the uh, fact that my dad really was born in a log cabin. I mean, for real log cabin, not like custom made log cabin or anything like that. So I, and uh, he grew up in the one room schoolhouse. And so I kind of played into that just a little bit. And you know, I've talked about how, you know, K K Kentucky and, and our education system there has kind of grown and just kind of tugged on that little heartstrings there. And uh, you know, I made it kind of a fun interactive, not interactive, but it was a fun video. And I kind of got their attention, I think, with that. So I think that kind of helped me. and. Uh, I think I used, I think I used Photo Story back then and turned it into a, a movie, but Google probably wouldn't like that, maybe. But anyway, uh, the other thing is sell yourself. You got to, you got to say this is how good I am. This is not arrogance, but you got, you got to tell them the things that you've done. Uh, when I was getting job interviews. Uh, I would often go, oh, I'm a team player, you know, I work for the team and all this kind of stuff. No, with a job interview, i got to tell them what I do because they're wanting to know about me. So, <coughs> yeah, I'm a team player, but this is what I did, I did, I did, I did. So you really got to let them know how good you are and how you're going to help make this happen. So you got to have some real positive vibes and give some real uh, uh, pertinent uh, uh, activities that you've been good at. I'm really good at this. Okay. Uh, one of the other things I want to mention in terms of sharing your influence, it doesn't necessarily have to be going out and training teachers face to face. It doesn't have to be something physical like Teach Me Today. It can be something as simple as your Twitter following, that you're sharing this information out via your Twitter account to educators around the world. It could be a website that you create to share information or tutorials or lesson ideas. So don't think just in terms of influencing people face to face. You know, your district may not give you the time to go out to conferences and share things with people, 
but you can find other ways in this digital world to share information and get it out there to a global audience. So be creative when it comes to that as well. So we have some links here. I'm not going to go through all of them because you will all have the links to the presentation itself. But what I did want to show you are a couple of the video samples. Now, on this page, these are the videos from the Google Teacher Academy in Chicago. And what the curator did was list all of the videos that were submitted that they could find, and then also noted whether they were accepted or not. So if you are trying to figure out how to make that video that's really gonna pop and make them notice you, it's probably a good idea to come here and start looking through some of these sample videos. Now I'm not sure if we're going to have sound here. I don't see if I can find the one I was looking for. There's a great one that was a rap. I'm not going to spend too long looking for it because you'll have a chance to go through these. Hey, Aunt, you wake up. What was the sweet thing I was just made of testing Google Island? I just heard about Morgan Freeman's YouTube show. What did they do? I would allow me to see what students need and then give them the opportunities to develop the skills they'll need to cultivate in order to be successful. Let me show you. Motivation and learning comes from matching interests with opportunity, from seeing a connection to life outside of the classroom, and then to use, develop, and master the skills that will be applicable now and in the future. Motivation and learning is all about creativity, collaboration, information fluency, innovation, communication, critical thinking, and following a passion. Google Islets are amazing, but the capabilities of students with these skills are even more remarkable. Who knows what will be next with Google? Maybe these very students will be the next Google developers. Alright. So hopefully, you know, by looking at that, you can already start to see. They're talking about collaboration, they're talking about creativity. How are students going to be using these tools down the line? All things you might want to consider including in your video. Does your video have to be exactly like that one? No, and I think obviously they are looking for new and unusual and creative ways to share what you do. Yeah, let's try to on the next slide. We have two minutes left. Some of the benefits of being a Google certified teacher uh, Self-confidence. For me, uh, I went to Washington, D.C., and I was with about 50 or 60, was it 50? You said it was 50? Yeah, it was 50 other people, and Twitter just started going on at that time, so I was setting my Twitter account at the event, and we were like, everybody had laptops, uh, and at that time, you know, everybody was just starting to use their laptops a little bit more. Three or four people over there were tweeting. I'm like, what the heck are y'all doing? And we're tweeting. I'm like, what the heck is that? And so they showed me. So by this time, the Google certified people were coming up there. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Hey, this is Google Docs. This is what you do with Google Docs. Oh, by the way, here's Google Maps. This is what you do with Google Maps. So it was boom, 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 fast pace. And I was trying to tweet. And I was just not getting my Twitter account set up. But I finally caught on a little bit and got a little bit better. But then when I got through it, it's like, oh, wow, I did this. I can't believe I kind of caught up with some of these guys that are supposed to be rock star educators in technology. And then when I went back home, you know, my boss and my friend, oh, you're a Google certified teacher now. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> and so, you know, I stepped, I stepped a little taller. And then when I went to my, my presentations with my teachers, um, I told them that I was a Google certified teacher. So you might want to listen up now, you know, so. Um, and at home, I can have a little bit more fun with them, but it really gave me some pretty cool self-confidence to go out, and, and it just keeps making me better and better and better. Uh, and again, that opportunity to empower other educators. Man, it's fun when you tell one educator something, and then they go off and do it. That's cool stuff. That's why these teach meets are so much fun, because we get to learn from real teachers doing real things. Um, and you get to share something that really works. 
you know, Google stuff just works. We're a Microsoft state, and a lot of stuff Microsoft's good, and that's great. We've been trying to get SkyDrive now for three years. They say, okay, it's going to work. Oh, now you got to do this. Okay, we're going to do this. And then, oh, yeah, three, Office 365 is coming. Get ready, get ready, get ready. But the whole time I've been using Google Docs. I mean, I've been sharing and collaborating with people for now five years, just wearing Google Docs out. Uh, and we got these cool shirts. And um, since Meredith is a lot smarter than I am, she may talk about the collaborative group. Don't push yourself down. I thought you said you had self-confidence. Well, yeah. <laughs> One of the best things that I got out of the Google Teacher Academy was not so much getting to go to Google, although believe me, that was really, really cool. Candy, cappuccino. Oh my god. Their cafeteria is amazing. They have a sushi chef on staff in the cafeteria. It wasn't all of the cool tools they showed us. The best thing I got out of Google Teacher Academy was the connection to my cohort, my class that I went through Google Teacher Academy with. I have made lifelong friends with some of them. We share, we collaborate, we keep in communication, we bounce ideas back and forth with each other, and I know if I ever have a question, a problem, I need some ideas, I can go to them and they will be there for me. Within my cohort, we're pretty close, but then you also have access to the global community of Google certified teachers, which expands your PLM even more. So the contacts that you make, the networking that you do, is probably the best part of the whole teacher academy. The other nice thing is that they periodically have what they call reboots, and every couple of years you can have a chance to go back to Google for a day, meet up with your cohort or other people who are Google certified in your area, and share what have you been up to, what have you done, what's new and exciting in the world of Google and EdTech. So you really get that chance to reconnect, share what you're doing, and share ideas back and forth. <coughs> All right, questions? Comments? Yes? Is it cost anything? It is free if you are accepted. There's, there's no application fee. There's no cost other than you are responsible for your own transportation there and you are responsible for any lodging costs if needed while you're there. But the academy itself, no charge. And I was able to talk to my, uh, my boss in this case. I was able to talk to my CIO and he actually took care of my uh, flight and uh, lodging. So some people pay it on their own. Some people get their schools. It kind of depends where you're at. But the benefits that my boss has gotten from it is outweigh that flight cost and that lodging cost. And they give you the food. How, how often are they issued and how long are the conferences? So the question was how, how often are the, do you have the Google Certified Teacher Opportunity? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Okay. Um, they have them several times a year. I'm not sure if there's a set schedule for them, but one of the links on the slideshow is a link to the Google Teacher Academy page, and they will post any upcoming academies. You are not limited to the academies in your area. As long as you can physically get there, you can apply for any teacher academy around the world. Yeah, it's not just the United States. Yeah, they're, London, Australia. Yeah, they're, they're all over. And the academy itself usually lasts, I think, it's uh, two or three days that you're there. And I mean, your brain will be ready to explode by the time you're done. There's so much awesome information. Very minimal. No, because part of this is showing you all the cool things it can do and getting you to jump in and see the benefits of using them. I'm a little nervous. I just don't know. Someone in my group said that they were I just went to New York 2012. Someone in my group was a gym teacher. Um, I had someone in my group from South Africa, from Taiwan. They came, but I had a couple people in my group that were not Google teachers at all. I went to New York. Washington. A few years ago, there's Mountain View, there's Mountain 